Fox Sports. We are Buffalo. We are Houston. Last night, the Astros took advantage of some miscues by baseball's best team. The Astros responded with solid defense, and the long ball by El Caballo sealed the victory over the Phillies. Tonight, it's game two of the series, so get your game face on. Astros baseball is next on Fox Sports Houston. Texas Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball tonight it's game two of this brief three game homestand the Astros meet the Philadelphia Phillies good evening everybody Bill Brown and Jim Deshays the Astros won the opener last night five to one Brett Myers pitched well and the Astros hit now we'll see what game two brings the Astros did everything well last night solid defensively just a good complete a game now we turn our attention to tonight's pitching matchup a couple of lefties for the Phillies Cole Hamels what a year he's having part of that big three at the top of the rotation with Halliday and Lee and Hamels really doesn't take a backseat to anybody. He's been outstanding this year. One of the best changeups in all of baseball. Jay Happ certainly has been a bumpy ride for Jay. Tough year, but pitching pretty well since coming back from the minor leagues. First two times in particular. Last time out, struggled a little bit, labored through five innings in Pittsburgh. Hopefully he can turn the page on that one. Tonight, as Happ tries to beat the Philadelphia Phillies, they're pushing for a playoff spot. Hunter Pence got quite an ovation in his return to Minute Maid Park last night. Let's we'll see what game two of the series brings in just a moment. Park team is on the field. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays are in the booth. 
Thank you, Greg Lucas. And it's the Phillies and Astros for the next to last time this season. Phillies have won three. The Astros have one win in the season series. It's Jimmy Rollins, Placido Polanco, Hunter Pence, Ryan Howard, John Mayberry, Ben Francisco, Carlos Ruiz, Michael Martinez, and Cole Hamels. And the first pitch to Rollins is strike one. Jim Reynolds is the home plate umpire. Jay Happ with a 5 and 15 record. Facing the switch hitting shortstop with a 267 average. 14 homers, 58 runs batted in. Rollins takes that one. It's a 1 1 count. J roll last night, 1 for 4. He singled in the eighth inning. And he's just coming back from some time on the disabled list. He's 1 for 6 on this Phillies road trip. They won 3 of 4 in Milwaukee. Fly ball hits for center field. Jason Bourgeois is out there tonight. And that's out number one for Jay Happ. And Brownie mentioned five and 15 this year for Jay Happ. You take a look at his numbers since coming back from the minor leagues. He's made three starts. He's one and one with a 250 ERA. First two were very good and then labored last time out against the Pirates defensively. They'll be run down by that trio in the outfield. The ground ball is covered by this group here. Johnson getting a start there at third. Matt Downs at second. Liam Barmas at first and short. Quintero behind the play. Placido Polanco is at the plate, taking strike one from Jay. 278 for Polanco. He has five homers, 45 runs batted in. He was a pinch hitter and drew a walk last night. He's been playing with a sports hernia, which will require surgery after the season. It's one and one. Polanco fits well into this number two spot in the lineup. In Hap's career, he has one start against his former club, the Phillies, and he won that one. Pitching well for six and a third innings, giving up two runs. Smacked out to center field. Bourgeois over toward left center for the liner for out number two. Now last time out, Hap gave up a couple of homers to the uh, Pirates, Andrew McCutcheon. And he drove in four, all four runs that Jay allowed in his five innings, and he got a no decision despite having a three-nothing lead after half an inning. Now here's Hunter Pence in his second game back at Minute Maid Park as a visiting player. He had a good one last night with a double and a single. Stole a base going two for four. Batting average 313, fifth best in the league with 19 homers. He's driven in 86. And Jay throwing strike one to two of the first three batters. And uh, that is something that you might look for tonight because uh, usually when he's been effective, he's thrown strike one at a much higher percentage now. That's foul back, and it's no balls, two strikes. Q wanting this fastball up and in. And we're able to crowd Hunter with it. One ball, two strikes. Hap has 72 walks in 138 innings. Batting average against Jay, 277. And he has shown more aggressiveness, generally speaking, in his three games since he returned. You saw those numbers that JD mentioned since he got back from the minors. And he gets a strikeout on a pitch way up for a 1 2 3 first inning and a quick zero for Jay Happ.
Phillies went out one, two, three. Now the Astros lineup for Brad Mills begins with right handed hitting Jason Bourgeois in center field. It's Clint Barmas at shortstop. JD Martinez plays left field with Carlos Lee at first base. Matt Downs is the second baseman. At third, it's Chris Johnson. Jason Michaels, the former Philly, plays right field. A birth of Quintero, the catcher. For Jay Happ in a right handed hitting lineup against the lefty Cole Hamill. And that's not really a, a, a much of a bargain because his changeup makes him awfully good against righties. The number's outstanding uh, for Hamels. You see that 207 opponent batting average. That's the best among National League starters. Strike one to Bourgeois. As is his uh, 0 0.954 whip, his walks plus hits per innings pitched. So he's right there in that Cy Young conversation with his mates, Halliday and Lee. You find those three all over the National League pitching statistics among the top 10. One ball, one strike to Bourgeois, who's 10th in stolen bases with 26. Jason will uh, be the Astros nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award. That'll be uh, announced on the field tomorrow night. One ball, two strikes. For his charitable efforts in the community. He's hit 380 against lefties. Hasn't been too charitable toward them this year. That's in the air and down the first base side foul for still a one and two count for Jason. A couple of things are going on here with Bourgeois leading off and playing center field. One is that it's a lineup that is used against the lefty pitcher. And that bouncer goes to shortstop. Jimmy Rollins unloads quickly over to Ryan Howard and the other is that Jordan Schaefer needs a day after banging a ball off his shin last night. He got smoked. Here's the uh, Phillies defensively changes in center and left. Last night it was Ibanez and Victorino. And the infield has Martinez sliding over to play second base. Polanco who did not start the game last night in at third. And then the regular cast of characters at short first and behind the plate. And it's really a starring cast uh, other than Martinez is a fill in player at second. Clint Barmas did not start last night at shortstop. Angel Sanchez got that call. There's ball one to Clint. 249, 10 homers, 31 runs batted in. It's coming off a 400 average on the road trip, and he's hitting 348 in September. Smacks this one on a line toward the left field wall. And that hits a face of the wall, kicks back. And it's fielded by Francisco who throws to second. The ball gets away from Martinez. And it would have been a double anyway for Barmas, his 25th of the year. To go along with 10 home runs, Barmas picks on a changeup, and Hamels has one of the best in the business, but that one stayed up a little bit. As we've seen Clint do a number of times, go out and hook that ball, yank it to left with authority. And don't lollygag down that first baseline because if it's well played off the wall, they got a real legitimate shot to get you. And Barmas. Wally gag and not really part of his uh, vocabulary. No. It's really not part of anybody's vocabulary. Lollygagging. Who really says that? People said it 30 years ago. Right. JD Martinez takes ball one. JD had a fine game last night. 272, five homers, 29 runs batted in. He had uh, three hits last night, scored three runs. As the Astros banged out 11 hits and Scored five and seven innings off Roy Oswald. Yeah. Left field corner. Barmas around to score to make it one to nothing Houston. Martinez heads for second base. Back to back doubles. It's number 12 for Martinez, giving him 30 runs batted in. Yeah, Oswald, no problem. Hamels, no problem. Who's next? How would I bring him on? <laughs> JD starting to get back into his groove after scuffling for a little while. Three knocks last night. RBI double right here. Some of the Astros hits in last night's game were a little suspect. Two solid doubles here in the first inning off the talented lefty. Carlos Lee has put together a six game hitting streak. He's at 278 with 16 homers, 83 runs batted in. He had a two run homer last night into the Landry's Crawford boxes off Oswald, going two for three and was hit by a pitch. Strike one to Lee. The, uh, the, at bat in which he was hit by the pitch, he got it on the left pinky finger in the seventh inning and kind of pinched it. So not as bad as it could have been. Carlos has three homers in September. 
He kind of holds the bat with his pinky off the knob a little bit. And I think that may have helped him some. If it's right on the bat and then the ball hits the finger, gets the bat, it might do a little more damage. Exactly what Brad Mills said. He's a smart man, that Brad Mills. Yes, he is. 314 in September for Carlos with three bombs. He's driven in eight, and he has two career homers off Hamels with nine runs batted in. Ruiz out to talk with Hamels. Right handed hitters hitting uh, 196 against Cole Hamels. And to a certain extent, you do, do him a bit of a favor when you stack your lineup with all right handed hitters. Sometimes I think it's a good idea to put a lefty or two in there if if it makes sense the way you, your lineup sets up just to, to create a little different look for him and get him out of his groove because when he gets locked in, Fastball and then cut her in and change up away. He's awfully tough. One and two, and that's where he was in his last start. A complete game win at Milwaukee on Thursday with a four hitter. He won that one seven to two. He is three and two lifetime against the Astros with a 4.82 ERA. He has allowed two earned runs or less in 20 of his 28 starts, three earned runs or less in 25. Of his 28 starts. So this has been an unbelievable year for him. Missing there, he goes to a full count. And coming off of a very good year last year. He wasn't a big winner because the run support for him was just brutal. I think he finished a game or two above 500, but he had a career best 306 ERA. Yeah, he was 12 and 11. Carlos out to right center field. That will loop in for a hit. Martinez will get a stop sign from Dave Clark at third. On a single, the third straight hit for the Astros. Seven game hitting streak for El Caballo. A solid doubles. Now a little bloop single. Astros with the chance to put a crooked number on the board here against Hamels. Martinez to third, and now it'll be Matt Downs. Downs playing second base tonight, batting fifth with a 517 slugging percentage, 285 batting average, eight homers. He's driven in 33. He is one for three lifetime against Hamels. Rollins and Martinez set up for a double play. Foul back, that's strike one. Matt Downs said he really doesn't care what position he plays. Anything's fine for him as long as he's in the lineup. He's Really happy about that, and this season he has had 172 at bats. There's been some talk about playing him in the outfield a little bit. He's going to prepare himself for that here in the final couple of weeks of the season. That one hit him, and the bases are loaded. It'll be Chris Johnson with three men on and one out. Probably cast cost the Astros a run right there because I don't know if Ruiz is able to block it if it doesn't hit downs and would have gotten to the backstop. And Martinez likely scores. Fifth time Hamels has hit a batter this season. And now he's into it facing Johnson, who has 38 runs batted in with six homers and a 246 batting average. He is two for three against Hamels. But you really want to cash in here because you just don't know how many chances you're going to get in the game against a guy like Hamels. Don't let him off the hook here. That's strike one. Jason Michaels on deck. This is Johnson's third start at third base since he was recalled from the minors on the 2nd of September. Martinez Lee and Downs, the base runners. It's one and one. Chris Johnson hit 272 at Oklahoma City. Hamels has never allowed a grand slam and has kept the batting average down to 234 with the bases loaded against him. It's high time he allows one. <laughs> Welcome to the fraternity. <laughs> well, that pitch. One and two. Four of the last five series between the Phillies and Astros have been swept by one team or another. The Astros have had. Two four game series sweeps against the Phillies in recent years. The Phillies have swept three game series against Houston twice, including the opening series in Philadelphia this year. Late last August, when the Phillies were driving toward their fourth straight NL East title, the Astros swept the four game set against Charlie Manuel's club in Philadelphia.
That was 3 2. Oh, that was close. That's a great eye there by CJ. And a big 3 2 pitch is coming, the early going for Hamels, who's pitched 194 innings this year. Grounded foul. He'll throw that change up any time, any count, regardless of the situation. CJ able to get a piece of it and stay alive. Hamill's got his second All Star selection of his career this year. He's also an All Star in 07. He was MVP of the League Championship Series and the World Series in 08 when the Phillies beat Tampa Bay to win that title. One of only five guys to ever do that. He comes back to strike out Johnson for a huge out number two in this inning. Now Jason Michaels gets a shot. Again, it's a change up. He kind of gets around this one a little bit and actually runs down and in on CJ. J. Mike, the former Philly, now would love to deliver a two out hit with a 200 batting average. He has a couple of homers. He's driven in 10. Going to second to Martinez for the fourth play. And the Astros come away with one run on three hits, stranding three, leading one nothing after one. Initiative. We are proud to wear these pins during our 2011 MLB on Fox Sports Houston season to support Stand Up to Cancer and their work to fund groundbreaking research that helps accelerate treatment to patients. For more information, please visit StandUpToCancer.org slash Fox Sports. One nothing lead for the Astros. Now it's Howard Mayberry and Francisco do up for Charlie Manuel's Phillies in the top of the second inning. Phillies magic number is one. To clinch a playoff spot. So if they win this game or if the St. Louis Cardinals uh, lose, then the Phillies are in. 252 for Ryan Howard, 33 homers. Leads the majors and runs batted in with 112 and looks at strike one. Howard last night was 0 for 4. The pitch is up and it's a one ball, one strike count for Jay Happ. In this ballpark, Jay is four and six with a 4.780 RA for the season. Infield shifted around. One and two. And Chris Johnson has to cover all that territory between second and third. Well, if you were to look at a spray chart on Ryan Howard, you'd see. Very few balls hit on the ground on the left side of the field. You see some line drives and some fly balls to the outfield, but almost never would a big, strong left handed pull hitter hit the ball on the ground to the left side.
Howard's hit six career homers in this ballpark in 84 at bats. He's driven in 18 runs in 21 games here. There's the direction of his hits this year. This one in the air, right field line, and Michaels came up with it. Tremendous catch by Michaels in right. Ouch. Takes the glove off immediately. Ball sinking on him, and at the last, he dives for it and then rolls over on his wrist. A great job hanging on. Because watch what happens with the glove here when it hits the ground. I mean, basically falls off his hand. Or almost does. Pretty impressive. Very good work. John Mayberry Jr. looks at strike one. His father played for the Astros. 263, 13 homers, 45 runs batted in for Mayberry. Very athletic. Outfielder with a 509 slugging percentage this year. He fouls that one back. Mayberry's had 224 at bats this year. Graceful player, and uh, he's barged his way into a lot of playing time in that Philly outfield. Sent down to the minor leagues, came back with a little bit of different, uh, a little bit of a different approach at the plate, bent over, crouching a little bit more than before, and it has served him well. Half comes in, but. Just missed apparently it's one and two. That's the book on him. Crowd him, try to tie him up with fastballs in. Mayberry was born in Kansas City. His dad played for the Royals for years. Went to Stanford University, first round draft choice of Texas in 05. Rips this liner for the left field corner. That one one hops the wall. Mayberry with those long strides moves into second base. Here's the throw. He is always safe. The ball was there, but he was called safe by Andy Fletcher. Yeah, well, well, they, uh, Picked the, the glove right off of Matt's hand. Quite a throw from J.D. Martinez from a left field corner. I yeah, sure was. And Mayberry, as Brownie mentioned, was really getting after it. Perfectly played here by J.D. And then a good strong throw into Matt Downs. Wow, that's a great look. And the ball squirts out. You see it there. And Brad Mills is coming out. Downs caught the spikes of the sliding Mayberry on his left hand or wrist. <laughs> Sarah, while he's out there, is going to do double duty and check in with Jason Michaels, too, <laughs> to make sure he's okay. I mean, his wrist roll back on him a little bit. And Carlos, who got hit on the hand last night, so they're going to have a whole. Uh, a conference out there. They got a hand center conference right there. A little triage area. This is a great look. Great replay. See maybe his foot come right on top of the hand of Downs. And he's out until right there. So Nate Lucero's treating that area for Matt Downs. That was quite a throw with the ball awaiting there. And you know, a head first slide probably doesn't get the job done there. It's the spikes going into his wrist or hand area that caused the ball to come out. So the head first slide that does make it sometimes a little bit tougher to tag if the wrists are, are right along the ground, but Nonetheless, the spikes do present a formidable way to reach the base. And now with one out, it's Mayberry on for Francisco. 237, six homers, 33 driven in. Say Ty Cobb used to go in thigh high with his spikes. <laughs> yeah. He used to sharpen them. I don't know whether that's true or not, but that is part of the legend. Francisco, a good defensive player with six homers, 33 runs batted in, 29 years old. He looks at that one for ball two from Jay Happ. Francisco was drafted by Cleveland in 02. Phillies got him uh, in a trade with Cliff Lee in 09. 
That brings that one in for strike one call, and it's 2 1 with Ruiz on deck. Raul Abanez usually plays left against right handed pitching. And that was the case last night against Brett Myers. Big opportunity this year for Francisco with Jason Worth moving along as a free agent, but Francisco really didn't perform that well. And that's part of the reason why the Phillies went out and got Hunter Pence. Francisco has hit 382 lifetime against Houston for 34 at bats. It's underneath that one. It hangs over the infield. Chris Johnson comes in, calling off the Terrell. Two outs. Big out there for half after the double by Mayberry. And now it's Ruiz. Perhaps best start recently, anyway, was that game here against Pittsburgh on August 31st. The 2 0 shutout win with seven shutout innings for Jay. Ruiz, 285, five homers, has driven in 34. Last night he went one for four to extend his hitting streak to nine games. During the last nine games, he's been a 353 hitter. Here's ball one to him with Martinez on deck. Perhaps trying to change things up a little bit. Starting Ruiz with a change up first pitch. He's got a base open, so he can be a little discerning here. Not that Ruiz is Ryan Howard, but he's pretty decent with the bat. Got some big hits for the Phillies in recent seasons. 285 batting average this year, five homers, 34 driven in. So we'd probably rather not give in to him and, and go after Martinez. It's in for strike one. Ruiz, like Carlos Lee, was born in Panama. Chooch. They call him Chooch. Yeah. Last year he hit 302. Now it's 3 1 to him. The Phillies are fifth in run scored in the National League. They've improved quite a bit in the second half of the season. Out to the right of the shortstop, Barmas, who backhands and throws low, but Carlos Lee is there to turn it into out number three. No runs a hit, a man stranded for the Phils. It's 1 0 Houston.
Ram all starts and it's strike one to Quintero, a 261 hitter with two homers, 25 runs batted in, who had an excellent game last night. Three hits and an RBI. This one's in the air to left. Moving back, Francisco on the warning track. One out for Hamels. That's when you're yelling at. If you're on the mound, you're screaming at that ball. <laughs> Don't you dare leave this ballpark. <laughs> Hamels has to feel like he uh, dodged a bullet in the first inning, allowing just one. Astros had the bases loaded with just one out. He could not cash in anymore. Jay Happ left this ballpark. 194, one homer, four runs batted in. He had a homer to right field earlier this season. Strike one to Jay, who has seven hits. He went deep against Arizona and Josh Ballmanter. No balls, two strikes to Jay. Jason Bourgeois is on deck. It's one and two. Hamill's trying to equal his career high with win number 15. In 07, when he was an All Star for the first time, he was 15 and five. Haps down on strikes. That's number two. Cole with 74 major league wins, 52 losses, has a 3.37 ERA for his career. Facing the Astros for the first time this season. Jason Bourgeois grounded a shortstop in the first. He looks at ball one. The Orioles just fell behind the Rays. Tampa Bay getting two in the top of the sixth inning at Baltimore for a 2 1 lead with David Price on the mound. Evan Longoria hit his 26th homer. Rays just called up a flame throwing young lefty and they're kind of comparing him to Price what Price did in 08 when he came up in September and worked in relief and helped them get to the World Series. Tampa Bay trying to put on this furious kick at the end to run down the Red Sox trail Boston by three games for the American League wild card in Boston the 6 5 lead over Toronto through four innings at Fenway. Tim Wakefield making, I believe, his eighth bid for Kerwin number 200. <laughs> it's been a try, try again for Tim. That Boston rotation has really been ravaged. That's into center field. Bourgeois went up to get a high pitch on a 3 1 count and singled his way aboard with two outs. Eighteen steals in 23 tries with Cole Hamels on the mound this year. Bourgeois may contemplate larceny here. Clint Barmas with that double to left field in the first inning, then came around to score on a Martinez two base hit. Howard set up kind of interestingly at first base. There is strike one to Barmas. About a step in front of the base. Why would he be there? Because he's Ryan Howard. He's big. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Besides of that man, you gonna tell him to move? <laughs> no. No, why he's there. No, I imagine he's there because he feels like he can still apply the tag to Bourgeois and he's a little bit inside. And that would give him a better chance to get an angle on a pickoff because the throw to second. Bourgeois had a big jump, stole that base easily. 27 steals for Jason. And that's the deal with Hamels. Like a lot of left handers, he doesn't really worry too much about being quick to home. He's just hoping the fact that he's facing that runner is going to slow him down a little bit. The bourgeois gambles goes on first move and with the pitcher going home not using any kind of a slide step it becomes fairly easy for him to get that bag. Now one and two to Barmas. 
And the fastball gets a strikeout to end the Astros second with no runs, one hit. Strikeout number three of the night for Hamels. Keeps the game at one to nothing, Houston. Cancer Center making cancer history from this date in 1969. And Larry Durkin went eight and two third no hit innings against the Braves. But the no hitter was broken up by Felix Mion. Durker ends up going 12 scoreless, allowing four hits, and the Braves won it in the 13th, three to two. That was a bump. Yeah, there's strike one to Martinez leading off. It's one to nothing, Houston. The Astros have a new right fielder. JB Shuck has taken over there for Jason Michaels, who appeared to injure his left wrist or hand. With that catch in the last inning on Howard's fly ball. Chris Johnson gets an easy two hopper and throws across for out number one here in the third. And here's J. Mike on that play on Ryan Howard. It looked scary at first, but he was able to stay in the ball game. But obviously bothering him to a point where he had to come out. He'd be shucked now the right fielder. He's probably going to be a hero tonight. Cole Hamels has 10 hits this year. There's strike one to him, a 159 average with three runs batted in for Hamels. It's one and one. It's quite a trio to face in one series. Oswald Hamels with Halliday coming tomorrow in the day game at 105. Bouncer Carlos Lee spears it, crossing to half. Well done for the second out. And the Astros managed to avoid Cliff Lee. But uh, pretty spicy pitching they're up against in this series and culminating with maybe the best tomorrow Halliday. And certainly over the last two or three years he's been the best pitcher in baseball you would have to argue. Linscombe certainly could make a case. Jimmy Rollins hit a fly ball to center leading off the game. Lee and Halliday are tied for third in ERA in the league. 2.44. Hamels is fifth at 2.60. Collins takes and it's a one ball one strike count with Polanco on deck. Phillies have a major league best 30 and 9 record against lefty starters. Out into shallow center, caught by Varmus for a one, two, three, third, and three good innings from Jay Happ in the books with a one nothing Houston lead.
on Jack's Really Big Chicken Sandwiches back for only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. By AT&T, Rethink Possible. And by the motion picture Moneyball in theaters September 23rd. Well, Art Howe is not in it, but he is in it. In other words, the character of Art Howe is played in Moneyball. And that'll be an interesting movie to see how they turned that book into a movie, to be honest. I read the book. You guys read the book? No. I did <laughs> read the book, yeah, but it's been a few years. Saw Young Candidates, J.D. Who's your choice? Yeah, well, it just depends. Depends on who's pitching tonight, right? I mean, every time you think you got the guy, one of them goes out and pitches a dandy. And you, go, you know what? I'm going to have to vote for him. I can't remember a year where there's been this many guys pitching at this level where... I mean, really, you could make those five guys there. You could make a, a compelling case for any one of them. J.D. Martinez, who doubled earlier, takes, and it's two balls, no strikes to J.D. He was in a September swoon until last night. Uh, Hamill's so confident in that changeup, you could almost sit changeup in fastball counts. You're just as likely to get the changeup 2-0-3-1. As you are to get the heater. That comes in for a strike on the heater, and it's a two ball, two strike count now for Martinez with Lee and Downs to follow in the Houston third. Hamels in the dirt with that one, goes to a full count here. The Astros. Had the bases loaded and one out after scoring their first inning run and then Hamels got tough striking out Johnson getting Michaels to bounce into a force play. That's it out to left field. Francisco there. One out. Our leaders of the game is brought to you by United proud to fly the Houston Astros. Carlos Lee is the only active player with 50 extra base hits or more in his first 13 major league seasons. That's pretty impressive stuff. Very consistent. Had exactly 50 extra base hits his rookie year. 16 homers, 32 doubles, a couple of triples. There's strike one. We just got the announcement on Jason Michael's injury. It's an injured left ring finger, and he is being taken for x rays now. Hmm. One and one to lead. The Astros notched their 50th win last night. Ground ball to third. Him is settling in with pretty good groove right now. He's hitting his spots. It's on the second fastball. It's called ball, but right there at the knees. The Astros have won 50. The Phillies have lost 50 with their 94 wins. Runs hit by a pitch on the foot and then stepped on at second base by Mayberry on that double. Catching a spike on the glove hand. He's due for a little something good to happen. <laughs> it sure is. It's a breaking pitch, takes it. There is strike one. There's a shot right by Hamill's glove and on through the center field with a vicious. Well, it gets by the center fielder now, Mayberry, and Downs is going to go for third base. Here's the relay from Martinez, and the ball hit him. He's safe at third. He really turned it on. Once that ball got by Mayberry, he was not stopping at second. Probably should have, but he got away with it with two outs. It's a high risk play to go from second to third on this ball. So something good did happen for down the base hit. And then Mayberry, wow. He just he just locked himself up with the blooper reel. Mayberry RFD from there on that long throw. Yeah, and then a little, little more pain is roll over the rib cage on that ball. That always feels good. Single and a two base error for Mayberry, his second error. Chris Johnson bats. Strike one. He whiffed on a 3 2 pitch back in the first inning.
St. Louis has the lead four to two at Pittsburgh in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chris Carpenter on the mound. Cardinals lost last night to the Pirates. Oh, and to the count. Carpenter just agreeing to a two year contract extension with St. Louis. He had an option year on his contract for next year. But they renegotiated that into a two year deal. Well, then it's still 0 2. JB Shucks on deck. Five hits for the Astros, one for the Phillies tonight. Cardinals have a lot of decisions to make this offseason, and they've gotten Carpenter out of the way now. They can turn their attention to Berkman and pool holes. One and two. It sounds as if they might be well served to go ahead and sign Berkman if they can do that quickly, because the pool hole situation might be more protracted. That might take a while, because he may want to explore the market after waiting through all this season. So Lance should wait, and then if Albert. Leaves, he could hold the Cardinals hostage. It's a point, it's just business. Don't take it personally, guys. <laughs> two balls, two strikes now. So you need a first baseman, do you? That <laughs> went in tight to CJ. And that's what he's got to be thinking. Okay, you're going to double up in there. They're going to come with that change up away. Neither heater away, mm -hmm. just off the outside corner. CJ having some. Good at bats. The last one didn't end well. He struck out with the bases loaded, but he was able to lay off a couple borderline pitches. He does so again here. Now whether that's just seeing it real well or not able to pull the trigger because he's thinking about the changeup, I don't know. That's that's kind of what facing Cole Hamels does to you. I'm so worried about that off-speed pitch. Sometimes you just can't pull the trigger on his fastball. Tap back to the mound. A lob toss over to Howard takes care of out number three. No runs, one hit, one error, one left, one nothing Houston after three. Park and you can celebrate Roberto Clemente Day tomorrow when the Astros host the Phillies at 105. Special pregame ceremony will honor Clemente and fans can donate non-perishable food items here at Minute Maid Park tonight and tomorrow for the Houston Food Bank. Tickets for that game, you can get them at Astros.com slash Clemente. Brownie, back to you. Thank you, Bart. There's ball one to Polanco. He lined out to center field in the first inning. The Phillies have won 11 of their last 15. Puts Matt Downs out into right center field for out number one. Juan Rodriguez <laughs> doing his Rex Jones impersonation on the bench. What do you do? Cut up an old mop? Looks like it. 
Hunter Pence struck out in the first inning. Hap set him up for a high heater, and Hunter chased it way upstairs. He fouls it for strike one. Game plan here tonight, very similar to Cole Hamels. Effective use of the changeup, not as much as Hamels, but using that and then throwing that fastball in on the right handed hitters a little bit. He's whacked a long way to left center field. Hunter Pence has hit this one to tie the ball game. A no doubter over the archway in left center field to make it 1 1. Home run number 20 for Pence, giving him 87 runs batted in. Threw him a good change up for strike one. Came back with another one and threw him a hanger. Six game hitting streak for Pence. Not where you want to leave a change up. Not an unexpected result. Now it's tied and it's Ryan Howard coming up. Jason Michaels made a very good catch on him, but. Michaels had to leave the game because of it. Half has thrown first pitch strikes to nine of 12. Right to Howard with Mayberry on deck. Since 2004, the Astros are 31 and 19 against the Phillies, 620 winning percentage. That's tops in the league. It's one and one. And at home, the Astros have. Played well lately, winning eight of their last 12 home games. That's in for strike two. And to the big man Ryan Howard. He's gone into some unexplored territory for Philadelphia Phillies. Six straight years with 30 homers and 100 runs batted in. Two two to Howard. His magic number to clinch their division is five. It's three balls, two strikes. Thought they'd take another shot inside with the fastball there, but opted to go with a little breaking ball, and Howard able to lay off last night the Brett Myers curveball. We had Howard twisted in knots. Yeah, sure did. He draws a walk. It's his 72nd walk. Yeah, that pitch was awfully close. And Took it like he had a pretty good idea it was coming. Where's the pitch? Yeah, because the umpire saying no, he didn't swing, and Jason, forget that. How about where's the location? Let's go to the Fox tracks. <laughs> Brad Mills had said he thought Jay might be a little amped up for this game tonight. And that's natural pitching against his former club who traded him. There's Mayberry taking ball one. He doubled to left in the second. That evens the count at one ball, one strike. Good to see him not give up on the changeup, even though that's what Hunter hit out of the ballpark. It has been a good pitch for him tonight, so don't he made one mistake with it. Don't give up on it. That's the game plan with Mayberry. Change up down in the way and then the fastball in on the hands. It's two and one to Mayberry. One one ball game. The Astros got a first inning run on a double by J.D. Martinez. Phillies just tied it on a fourth inning homer by Hunter Pence. Glad you're with us tonight. Bill Brown, Jim Deshays, Bart Ennis, and Greg Lucas from Minute Maid Park in Houston. Line foul. Two balls, two strikes to Mayberry. That's, that's the danger pitch there when you get around that change up a little bit and it starts to cut over the middle of the plate. It could turn into a home run pitch to a right handed power hitter, kind of runs right into their swing. Well, the year started in very exciting fashion for John Mayberry Jr. He had a pinch hit game winning hit in the ninth inning as the Phillies beat the Astros on opening day. All back. The Astros had a lead in that game, four to two, going to the ninth inning, and Phillies went on to sweep that series. And they have just been 
on target from that day forward. Just really have not had a bad stretch. Mayberry strikes out. Number two. And it's Francisco next. Elevated fastball. Mary Mayberry pulls off. Look at that front shoulder goes. Hap versus Francisco, who popped up to third on a 3 2 count. Strike to Francisco. Mike Leak is making his final start of the year for the Reds. They're going to shut him down because he's reached the innings limit. Reds lead it two to one over the Cubs. Bottom of the sixth inning in Cincinnati. Brandon Phillips hit his 15th homer. Came off Ryan Dempster. No balls, two strikes. The Astros will be in Chicago this weekend. Francisco two pulling off. Right-handed hitters. Visions of exploiting the Crawford boxes. One and two. Well, they saw Carlos Lee do exactly that last night. It's Texas won Cleveland nothing. They're in the top of the third in Arlington. Out into right field for a hit in front of Shock. A single for Francisco. Gives the Phillies their third hit of the night. Brings Ruiz to the plate. Well, you know, sometimes you hear hitters talk about making adjustments from game to game and Sometimes even from pitch to pitch within that bat, there it was right there from Francisco pulling off earlier and then just staying on that ball and willing to poke a single the other way. Mm -hmm. Ruiz worked the count in his favor to 3 1, then he grounded the shortstop. Broken bat roller, Barmas over to Downs for the force play. Francisco with one run scoring on the Hunter Pence homer. Two hits, two men left. It's now tied 1 1 in the fourth. If you'd like to learn more about Chevy Youth Baseball programs, go to youthsportswired.com. That's where they learn to catch real baseballs instead of the souvenirs thrown into the crowd. Yeah. Fans having a good time tonight as they catch those things being thrown out. A lot of Phillies fans are here. J.B. Shock up for the first time. He took over for the injured Jason Michaels in right field. And that one comes in as he shows bunt. It's ball one. 
Chuck got a pinch hit on Sunday. 226, no homers, two runs batted in. That snapped an 0 for 13 for him. And before that, he had been hitting well. Hamels paints the outside corner. That makes it one and one to Chuck. Oh, lefty on lefty here. It'll be interesting to see what JB can come up with as he gets his first look at Hamels. And the appeal goes to third. He checked his swing on the call by Tim Welke, the crew chief. It's two and one. Yeah, I think it's not obviously not a good thing that Jason Michaels got hurt, but throwing a left handed hitter into the lineup. It proved to be uh, beneficial. Oh, he smacks a hit into right field. It's beneficial there. He takes a turn. Hunter Pence getting it back in. And Shuck, a very good at bat, worked the count to 2 1. Yeah. And line to single. Yeah. And I like it for the reason I said earlier that the, the, a good left handed pitcher like Hamels, it's nice to put a guy from the left side in there just to change the look a little bit, maybe knock him off his rhythm some. And then the numbers support it. To a certain extent, left-handed hitter sitting 242 against him. Right, he's just 196. Exactly. And Shuck moves around the bases pretty well. Is on for Quintero, who hit a fly ball to left earlier. Strike one to Q. Astros have had some very good hitting games from their catchers recently. Quintero, three hits in an RBI last night, and Carlos Corporan drove in three. In Washington Saturday night. Runner going. Here's the throw, not nearly in time. Shuck took off, stole the base. It's his second in as many tries yeah. in the big leagues. I like the aggressiveness. Not a big lead, but again, going on first move like Bourgeois, guessing right. Hamels with the high leg kick. And at that point, it becomes fairly easy for Shuck to get that back. He's in scoring position with the 0-2 count on Quintero and half next. Strikeout for Hamels takes care of out number one. That's his fourth. Well, he has a great walk to strikeout ratio. 40 walks, 175 strikeouts. Half was a strikeout victim in the second. Hamels has 23 quality starts of his 28. Yeah, that doesn't really do him justice to when you contemplate the definition of a quality start because the lion's share of those have been way better than quality as defined by baseball. That's ball one. We don't need any more stats. Jargon, things of that nature, but we'd have to come up with one. A superior start or something yeah. like that. Loop back over the screen. It's a one ball, one strike count to half. Well, a 208 batting average against him on the road. Speaks to what he's been doing this year. 207 overall. Best in the league among starting pitchers. Phillies pitchers actually have better numbers at home than on the road. Bouncer Howard. Howard boxes the ball and Hap will reach. Howard didn't pick it up cleanly. And that's costly with Hap reaching base and Shock taking third. Here on Ryan Howard, his ninth. Gets caught backing up, playing an in between hop, and then good hustle by Hap. Hamill's a little bit late to break. Seeing the miscue, finds a little bit extra. Race of the tall lefty pitcher to the bag, and Hap wins it. Now it's first and third for Jason Bourgeois with one out. Hops about two inches taller than Hamels. That was probably the difference. <laughs> Bourgeois grounded to shortstop and he singled. Rollins and Martinez move into double play depth. Bourgeois grounded into four double plays and 219 at bats. Strike one to him. 
The Astros left the bases loaded in the first inning. They had bases loaded one out after scoring. They left a runner at second base in the second. The situation here where Brad Mills likes that little push bunt play. It's not a squeeze play, but you push a bunt and let the man on third read it. Almost like the worst spot, not the worst case scenario. But if you get the button down, if you don't score the run, at least you push that back runner into scoring position and you give Barmas a chance to drive in two with the base hit. There's a butt try, but he fouls yeah, it. I think that's exactly what was on right there. He's bunting for a base hit, giving Chuck a chance to read the ball off the back. If he clears the pitcher, he's going to come home with the second run. It's not a squeeze play because Chuck is not coming with the pitch. Hamels is at 71 pitches, 45 of Ben strikes. Bouncer into left field. He gets shot home with a hit through the left side. Two to one, Houston. Bouchois' second hit of the night. RBI number 15 for Jason. Beats that ball on the ground. Polanco playing in, not able to cut it off. Seven hits for the Astros now off Hamels. Barmas has one of those, a double to left and a strikeout. High drive. Deep back into left center field. Francisco turning the wrong way. And that is a three run homer. Cliff Barmas hits number 11, and the Astros open it up here in the fourth inning. They lead it five to one as Barmas now has driven in 34 this season. Wow, how about that? After beating Roy Oswald last night, inflicting this damage on Hamilton. After he got out of that first inning jam, he'd settled into a very it looked like he was going to be awfully tough to get anything going against. But here in this inning, <laughs> three fair. hits, an error, and a big fly. Good catch there. Into the glove, came up with it. Now JD Martinez moves back from ball one. 15th homer surrendered this year by Hamels. And Barmas now has 11. One of his favorite spots is Crawford boxes. It's a one ball one strike count. So the Astros have hit a couple into the Landry Crawford boxes. Carlos Lee last night and Barmas tonight in the series so far. How many times has Cole Hamels allowed five runs in a start this year? Once. His first start of the year against the Mets. He allowed six and two and two thirds. Check that. Seven. Against, as well against the Mets. Where the Mets own him for whatever reason. Mm. Martinez strikes out. That's number five for Hamels. Well, this is quite a showcase for the Astros so far. Winning last night, five to one. The former Astro Roy Oswald with a dozen hits. And tonight they've had hits in every inning. And the error certainly helped to open the floodgates in this frame. Carlos Lee has a single on a ground out. Ball one for Carlos. He's now hit in 21 of his last 22 games. That's a clip of almost a 400 batting average. Last night, Roy Oswald allowed five runs on 11 hits. Oswald had allowed five runs and 10 or more hits in a grand total of three of his 149 starts here in this ballpark as an Astro. Hanging for Jimmy Rollins out in shallow center field. And in the fourth inning, the Astros hang a four spot on Hamels. They get three hits. The costly Howard error helped the inning, and they lead it five to one.
five to one. You know, the Joe Necro Foundation was founded in 2007. Of course, Joe Necro, the all-time winningest pitcher in Astros history. We lost him tragically in 2006 to a brain aneurysm. His daughter, Natalie, joins us now. And you started the Joe Necro Foundation. Thanks for being with us once again. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Talk a little bit about the foundation and, and what you guys do. Sure. Well, when my dad had his aneurysm, I didn't even know what one was. And the more research that I did, the more common I realized that they were. And I just said, I've got to do something to make a difference. And I started this foundation. And in the last... Um, you know, since since we started in 2007, we've raised over $2 million all towards wow. aneurysm research and treatment and education. And it's just about continuing to educate people on this condition that affects 1 in 15 people. So it's pretty, it's pretty astonishing how many people are affected by it and don't have any idea. And how can fans get involved? Our website is joenecrofoundation.org. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're actually hosting Brain Aneurysm Awareness Night here at the ballpark because September is Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month. So I encourage people to go onto the website, read about um, you know the, the risk factors that are involved and, and what they can do to look for symptoms and signs. And then obviously uh, we're also promoting our text to give campaign. So if they text strike out to two zero two two two, they can make a, den a ten dollar donation directly to the foundation. And ten dollars doesn't seem like a lot of money, but when we have thousands and thousands of fans, it can add up quickly. So a little goes a long way. It does add up quickly. Uh, you guys are doing a lot of research into brain aneurysms, treatment, uh, how, how to spot possible an onset of an aneurysm, uh -huh. because a lot of times they come out of nowhere. Absolutely, yes. And um, tonight we're actually promoting our early detection program. Our national initiative is called Want to Get Lucky, which is the shirt that I have on. And it's all about the importance of getting scanned for an aneurysm, because aneurysms are 100% treatable. You just have to know that you have one. And oftentimes, if you don't know that you have one and it ruptures, uh, you know, your chances of survival are less than 3%. So it's critical that you get scanned to find out if you do have an aneurysm. All right, Natalie Necro, thank you so much for being with us once again. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Your father was one of my all-time favorite players and people. A real sweetheart of a guy, Joe Necro. We miss him dearly, but he would be very proud of the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Brownie, back to you. Yeah, he sure would. Uh, thank you, Bart. Natalie does a lot of fine work uh, and her fundraisers throughout the country. That was out number one on the foul pop by Martinez to Carlos Lee. Now it's Cole Hamels. Hamels looking at ball one inside. He grounded out from Lee to the pitcher half covering. So that was a play they made to get him, but the Phillies couldn't make the play to get half in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two balls, no strikes. And Rollins on deck. And the Phillies have rarely done things like they just did with the error by Howard. They have the fewest errors, the highest fielding percentage in the major leagues. And they have allowed just 26 unearned runs before that inning. Two balls, two strikes. Traded, of course, last year in the Oswald deal along with others. Pitched well for the Astros last season. This year has been tough sledding for him. That's a strikeout. It's number three. On his way to his third, third very good performance in four since coming back from the minor leagues. So, really has a chance to finish the season strongly and will have something to build on heading into spring training next year. Whether there's a carryover or not, I don't know. But Certainly helps to, to finish the season with a nice run and some confidence. Rollins to right, a hit in front of Shuck. With two outs, Rollins is on with a single for Polanco now. Well, Hap 24 and 24 in the major leagues. Had a 12 and 4 year for the Phillies in 09. The Astros would love to see him continue that development he had coming into this season. Pick it up next year. Take it from there. Polanco line to center and he popped a second. This is Jay's 26th start with the Astros this year. Polanco takes it and it's ball one. Be several players who will play winter ball for the Astros. Brad Mills was talking about that. Brett Wallace, Ryan Bogusevic, Jose Altuve, probably Jimmy Paredes, Wesley Wright, 
And there will be others as well. Two balls, no strikes. 15 of 20 first pitch strikes for Jay Happ, and we just did not see a lot of that in the early part of the season. So that's a big improvement for Jay. Now three and zero. Oh. Uh, he gets uh, again. I say this every start of his. He gets squeezed down more than any pitcher I've seen. There's a lot of pitches down around the knees, and I don't know if it's just his angle because he's so tall, or if he's just running into the wrong umpires, or if I'm just sympathetic because he's tall and left-handed. <laughs> but he got that one up there that appeared to be out of the zone. Three-one. Johnny Damon of Tampa Bay reached a milestone tonight. 200 homers, 400 steel club for Damon. The ninth player in Major League history to join that club. As he stole a base tonight in the second inning. <laughs> there it is again. Yeah. Second walk for a half. And now he deals with Hunter Pence with two men mm -hmm. on. And a possible game changing situation right here. So even though you feel like you've been squeezed a couple of times. You have to kind of put that behind you and, and make quality pitches here to Pence. Don't let the moment get away from you. Pence struck out in the first and ripped a homer in the fourth. He's now four for eight against Happ in his career. There's ball one to him. Ryan Howard's on deck. You know, Pence has been one of the big reasons the Phillies. Have been so good against left handed pitching since he arrived on the scene with them in late July. Now it's 2 0. They have these very good left handed hitters, Howard and Utley when he's in there, and the other guys who bat left. But uh, Hunter's really picked it up and given them some right handed pop in their lineup. Dominic Brown did not work out, he bats left. He's back in Triple A right now in the playoffs. Two balls and a strike to Pence and Brown. Uh, the word is, you know, they're going into their second playoff series at Triple uh, A Club Lehigh Valley. He might not be a September call-up from what we're hearing for the Phillies. Three balls and a strike after they are finished with the playoffs. Takes a walk. Now the bases are loaded for Howard. Back to back walk for Hap. And Quintero goes out. Here comes Doug Brokale. You see, Doug kind of looked like one of those guys at the rodeo getting ready to come out of the gate on the on the steer or whatever it's called. He said, better bone up on my rodeo nomenclature. I've been in Texas long enough. <laughs> Does this remind you at all of what happened last time in Pittsburgh with Jay Hap? Well, I think his command is much better tonight. He threw 120 pitches in five innings last time. I mean, I think this is fairly typical for most pitchers where you're going to have one inning where you run into a crisis. You know, Hamels had his initially in the first, and then he kind of got ambushed there in the Astros' fourth. Well, Jay had the early 3 0 lead in Pittsburgh. It was 4 1, bottom of the fifth inning, two outs. Right after a mound visit, he gave up a three run homer to Andrew McCutcheon to tie the game. There's strike one, so he's certainly not interested in a repeat of that scenario. Mayberry's on deck. It's one and one to Howard. Chris Johnson with this time the infield shifted around but Johnson's in a little different position with the bases loaded. He's more toward third base than he was before as to be able to make a play over there. And it's two and one. Eighty-four pitches for a half. 
2 2 to Howard. Yeah, kind of a late call there from Jim Reynolds. Yeah. And one that could make a world of difference. Yeah, big time difference. 2 2 versus 3 1. Two strikes now. Wow, how do you take that pitch? Mm -hmm. Two holding it there a good long while. Reynolds, for the most part, has been consistent not giving that pitch. Runners go on 3 2. Foul back. Now, walk would not be the end of the world here. Another one. And trying to stay back. Doesn't want to get fooled by the off speed pitch or a little bit behind that heater. <laughs> to left field, Martinez backing. Feeling for the wall, he reaches up and snags it. Oh, baby. And a corner, nothing but a thing. And it's no runs a hit. Three men stranded as Martinez goes up for the catch. Five to one, Houston. And it's time for the AT&T trivia question. Will the Russell Bell toll for thee? Here is the question. What former Colt 45 and Astro hit the final home run ever hit in Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia? Jimmy Wynn. No, nope, you're on the right uh, track. At least he played for both the Colt 45s and the Astros. Joe Morgan. He did not hit it as an Astro, however. Uh-huh. Okay. You know, Connie Mack Stadium this last season was 1970. Ooh. 1970 Phillies. Well, he did not hit it for the Phillies. Ah. <laughs> There's another clue. Okay. Two balls and a strike to Matt Downs. We'll have to think about that. JD took a little break here, so. Well. He normally gets those. Oh, JD's not here. Well, no, I'll give you one more here. clue then. It's. Uh, he hit it for a team that no longer plays in that city. Ah. So Jimmy Wynn's not right, huh? So the uh, no, the Montreal Expos. That uh, would be the correct team. Yes. 
Boogs wants to go with Rusty Staub. That is not correct. All right. Let's see. Matt Downs takes a leadoff walk here in the fifth inning. He was a catcher. Ron Brand. Who? No. Let's see. Catcher for 45. It wasn't Jerry Grody. John Bacabella. <laughs> no. It wasn't, it wasn't John Bateman. He didn't play for the. Uh... Oh, it was. it was. He did play for them. He did. He played for the Expos at the end. It was John Bateman, an Expo at the time, 929-70. The last home run hit by anybody in Old County Max Stadium, which of course was formerly Shied Park and had been around for a long, long time. Good question. Did you know Bateman played for him? That was the original killer bees. Ron Bateman and Bacabella. Yeah, you're doing a lot of bees. A lot of bees. Oh boy, that Bacabella got a lot of play up there in Montreal. Just his name. John Bacabella. Yeah. He ain't answered. Mm -hmm. Love to drag it out, didn't he? And it is true, by the way, the story. That's where the umbrella hat came from. It was a cut. John Brock was behind it, and they thought it sounded perfect. Oh, really? Yeah. Brock Cabrella. Brock Cabrella. Okay. Bruce Johnson rifles one deep to center field. Mayberry backing on it, still going back at the warning track. He makes a retreating catch on a deep drive by CJ for out number one. Yeah, this is a ball that clearly had Matt tagged up. He could have advanced to second base, but it's so deep. You have to put yourself in position to score if Mayberry can't track that one down. Making it AT&T trivia question official John Bateman hit the final home run. In Connie Max Stadium. John Bateman went on to play with uh, Eddie Fainer the king in his court for Did a while. Yep. Know that. J.B. Shock singled stole a base and scored. Taking over in right field for the injured Jason Michaels who went for x-rays on his finger. There's strike one. Quintero is on deck. Astros have eight hits to the Phillies four two errors for the Phillies in this game. Ruiz comes up with that one in the dirt and it's a one ball one strike count. Colorado one Milwaukee nothing there in the top of the fourth at Miller Park. Zach Brinke's on the mound for the Brewers. Against Esmil Rogers. Several games start later on the West Coast including the Yankees at Seattle. One two to shock. Angels are in Oakland tonight. Arizona at L.A. as Ian Kennedy goes for his 20th tonight against Chad Billingsley. There's another very very strong Cy Young contender. And that Diamondback club on an unbelievable roll. You just figured out sooner or later they're going to start losing, but they haven't. Washington leads the Mets three to two. They're in the bottom of the seventh at New York. Bouncer gets through as down sashayed by it. And he started to go and then realized he might get hit. Which would have meant that he would have been out but. He stopped and shucks grounder. Became a hit to right field. I just had one of those on the road trip. Can't afford to have two in a week. <laughs> Evasive action was needed. How about shuck. Pressed into duty with the injury. Two for two. How many times do you see it? A guy not in the starting lineup comes in early in the game for an injury or whatever, an mm -hmm. injection, and has a big night. Well, it speaks to the fact that he kept himself ready. Alberto Quintero with strike one. He's 0 for 2. Usually guys don't come into the game as early as he did, but injury can happen at any time, and those extra guys really try to keep themselves prepared. For that uh, rather indistinct possibility, you know, normally they go up and stretch about what the fifth inning or so, JD. Mm -hmm. This is pretty early coming into a game, but it can certainly happen at any time. Got to be a Boy Scout, always prepared. That's it. Bench rolls a tough one, especially for a young player who really has not been a bench player. Um, a whole different way of preparing for that. Players sometimes have to acquire, and usually it's the veteran players who help them to do that. Ninety-four pitches for Hamill, sixty a bit strikes. One and two to Quintero with half on deck. 
The Astros have peppered Hamels with nine hits, and they've had hits in every inning so far. Breaks off one in the dirt, and it's a two ball, two strike count. Big blow in this one, a three run homer by Clint Barmas in the fourth inning. Big out was uh, with the bases loaded on Howard in the top of this frame. David Herndon's warming up in the Phillies bullpen. Hamels, who had been pretty efficient early now, uh, close to 100 pitches as he works here in the fifth inning. Been a lot of deep counts. Phillies have won 45 games on the road. That's tied for fourth most in a single season in their history. Their club record's 48. Quintero strikes out. That's number six. When Hamels gets his 15th win, and let's hope it's not tonight. It will be the first time since 1966 that the Phillies have had three starters with 15 wins or more. Back in 66, it was Chris Short with 20, Jim Bunning with 19, Larry Jackson at 15. Jay Happ is over two, but reached on an error and scored. Well, time called. It's somewhat surprising with all the winning they've done lately that they haven't had three 15-game winners. It really is. Yep. Lee currently 16 and 7, Halliday 17 and 5, with identical 244 earn run averages. Hap looks at ball one. The run that Hap scored in the fourth inning is the only unearned run scored by the Astros of the five allowed by Hamels. Puts one in the air to center, backing up Mayberry. For the third out, and it's no runs a hit. A couple of men left on after 5 5 1 Astros. Burger just like you like it. By HP, everybody on. And by Gullo Automotive, treating you like family. Now back to the booth, Bill Brown and Jim Machine. And a lively night here at Minute Maid Park. Greg Lucas, it's five to one Astros. Jay Happ had a threat to his lead when the bases were loaded in the fifth inning. And the count was 3 2 on Ryan Howard. He got him on a fly ball to the base of the wall and left. And now it's Mayberry leading off the sixth inning. He doubled in the second and struck out in the fourth. Strike one for Hap. For Francisco and Ruiz to follow in the Phillies sixth inning.
Kansas City leads Minnesota 4 0 there in the sixth. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, you know, a, a few feet, sometimes a few inches can change the storyline in a ball game. Because if Howard's ball goes out of here, and all of a sudden it's like, gee, Jay Happ was going along nicely, but he got wild. He walked a couple, gave up a big home run, when in reality he was making a lot of good pitches throughout those two walks. You know, a lot of borderline pitches just didn't go his way. And Howard hits one of the short part of the park. Fortunately, it stayed in. So now the storyline remains. Hey, Jay Happ's having another good start since coming back from the minor leagues. <laughs> it can be a fine line. Yeah. Three feet. Three walks, three strikeouts for Jay through the first five. Well, back, and it's still one and two to Mayberry. The Phillies have 94 wins. They have the best. Winning percentage 653 in the majors. The Yankees have a 610 winning percentage. Popped up foul. Carlos Lee comes over. Won't be able to get to it. Bounces high off the dugout roof. Still wanted to. Last year the Phillies had the best record. They won 97. And lost 65. So they're going for their fifth straight division title. Mm -hmm. so it's a uh, golden era of baseball right now in Philadelphia. Selling out the ballpark every night. TV ratings are blowing up. Two and two. It's going pretty well in Detroit. Also, the Tigers with an 11 and a half game lead over both Cleveland and the White Sox, and leading tonight with Justin Verlander on the mound. One nothing at Chicago in the bottom of the fifth. Probably got a no hitter going. Up five hits. Oh, it was wild backing in left center. He got back early, one out. Tigers looking for their 11th consecutive win. Gavin Floyd's on the mound for the White Sox tonight. Now let's see. The Tigers and Yankees are pretty close together. Yankees a little bit better with uh, four more wins at the moment. And they lead in the loss column by five. Francisco the batter. And there's ball one to him. But that's going to come into focus more here as we go into the final two weeks of the season. Season ending on a Wednesday this year. Two weeks from tomorrow. Playoffs will open on Friday. So uh, these teams that have the big leads will still be jockeying for home field advantage in the playoffs. Atlanta scoring uh, three in the sixth, three more in the seventh, have taken control of a six to one ball game over the Marlins in Atlanta. Freddie Gonzalez calling a team meeting today to talk to his boys. Chipper Jones referred to as a circle the wagons meeting. Only the second one Freddie has called this year. So they had lost four in a row for the first time all year. Cardinals starting to sneak up on them in the wild card. Francisco strikes out. Number four. Good high heater right there. Tigers with 10 straight wins the first time since the vaunted 68 Tigers did it Chipper Jones has tied Craig Biggio on the all time extra base hit list. Mariano Rivera 600 saves Peralta pitching well. He's taken over as the closer now for Tampa Bay. Farnsworth is injured. Ruiz looking at ball one is 0 for 2 in this game. Speaking of Craig Biggio he went to school today. Joined the uh, winner of a 12 year old contest, uh, Caleb, Caleb Henson, won that essay contest at Swinky Elementary School in Cypress, Texas. As he was taken to school by Caleb. Two balls and a strike. He was kind of like show and tell? Probably. <laughs> 3 1 now to Ruiz. Martinez is on deck. 
And there's a two out walk. Fourth walk for Hap. That was a bad walk. Again, I think he was getting pinched a little bit. He was making good pitches. That's the situation here. Two outs, nobody on down towards the bottom of the order. The four run lead where you're willing to channel one right down the middle, but he just couldn't make the pitch. There you go. Strike one to Martinez. He's 0 for 2. Pitcher spot due up next. The Phillies are getting a pinch hitter ready. In case that spot does come into play, uh, Shane Victorino comes out to the on deck circle. Had Herndon warming up. It's a one ball, one strike count with Victorino waiting there. Roy Oswald hit with two outs, nobody on in the seventh inning last night. We were asking uh, some of the Phillies broadcasters about Charlie Manuel not pinch hitting for Roy. And they thought that uh, Charlie just wanted to get Roy stretched out, ready for the playoffs, keeping him in the game for another inning. Fouled away, and that will go into the seats. For a two ball, two strike count. Ugla hit his 34th tonight for the Braves. McCann number 24 for Atlanta. That was really close last night to a win for them, but uh, Michael Bourne was called out. A very close play at first. The winning run would have scored had he been safe. In tight. Three balls, two strikes now. Mike Miner started for the Braves tonight against Brad Hand for Florida. Bouncer Barmas to his right sets up and throws hard to Lee again. Carlos picks it on a low throw for the third out. No runs, no hits, and a man stranded. Middle of the sixth inning. The Astros lead the Phillies 5-1. Made Park, and we have changes. And we also have a show to promote for you Spotlight 1986 Astros. David Delotti, the host of that show, it comes your way tomorrow at 11 o'clock on FS Houston. And it will be also airing on September 20th at 5 p.m. and September 26th at 6 p.m. if you get a shot at JD and the 86 Astros. You know how they make movies with alternate endings? Yeah. But anyway, David could have done that for that show. <laughs> he could have. John Mayberry has moved from center field to left. Shane Victorino's in the game, batting ninth in center field. He'll lead off the next inning. And the pitcher is David Herndon. And he gets a one hopper to third. Jason Bourgeois is out number one. This call to the bullpen is presented by Verizon Wireless, showing you Herndon on the mound after Hamels went five, allowing nine hits, five runs, four earned, walking one, hitting a batter, and fanning six. 
Turned him with a good sinker. You saw it there. He gets a lot of ground ball outs. 39 times he's gone out there. One and three, 375 the ERA. Glenn Barmas has the biggest hit in this game. He had a first inning double, but then in the fourth, unloaded a three run homer. The Astros got four in that inning to build their five to one lead. It almost hit him, and it's ball one from Herndon. Herndon with the, those sinkers are going to be running down and in, and that's kind of a sweet spot for Barmas. If he cheats on one, tries to clear that front side and drop the head on one. He's going to throw him a slider away here, I think. He takes it to ball two. Well placed. I'm surprised that Charlie Mandel didn't come out and argue. Maybe that ball was over the railing. Yeah. It wasn't, but from the dugout, as you watch that, you might think it was. That maybe may speak to the comfort level of Charlie Manuel with this big lead. He's got a 12 game lead. <laughs> may help explain why Oswald batted in the seventh inning last night, too. Maybe. Yeah, you want to keep going, kid? I right, go ahead. In tight. Fernando Rodriguez is warming up for Houston. The count's three and one. Paps throwing 112 pitches through six. Barmas hits it to center field. Victorino waiting. Two outs for Herndon. The Philly bullpen has undergone several changes throughout the season using different closers with Brad Lidge out. Now Lidge is back in more of an eighth inning setup role rather than the closer spot. Jose Contreras got a shot, but he's gone out for the season with surgery now on his elbow. And they tried a lefty closer. Antonio Bastardo did quite well for a time, but lately it's been Ryan Madsen pitching well as their closer. Martinez looking at ball one. To me, that's the key to the bullpen. They have a lot of options. Guys capable of getting big outs late in the game, whether it's the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning. Martinez takes that one. It's a strike. Carlos Lee's on deck. Hernan was a Rule Five pick in 09 by the Phillies. Ball third. Polanco over to Howard for a 1 2 3 6 for Herndon. 5 to 1 Houston. Panicking. Catch all the action of the 2011 Major League Baseball postseason on Fox and TBS. The excitement begins September 30th with the division series on TBS. And Philly fans, your team will be there. Guys, back to you. 
There are a lot of them here as you have seen. <laughs> and uh, They've been pretty quiet so far throughout a game and a half of this three game series. The Astros won it last night five to one. Out hitting the Phillies 12 to 6 tonight the Astros lead it by that same 5 to 1 score. They go with their second pitcher of the night. He is right hander Fernando Rodriguez. First pitcher Jay Happ handled himself quite well. Now he passes the baton off to the Astros bullpen. And uh, Fernando Rodriguez been pretty solid this year. 2 and 3 record in the ERA of 3. 41 appearances. A little better than a strikeout per inning pitched. Been on a nice roll lately. Last night. Astros got eight innings from their starter Brett Myers, so a pretty well rested bullpen heading into this one. Shane Victorino is the first man up here in the Philly seventh inning. He entered the game in the number nine spot in the order with a 292 average, 16 homers, 57 runs batted in for the Flying Hawaiian. He scored 88 <laughs> runs. Switch hitter hitting 281 as a left handed batter. Taking ball one. Victorino set a career high for triples in a season with 15 this year. As a right handed hitter, he's off the charts this year. 327, a 654 slugging average, 438 on base. Luke Gehrig or something. It is. Upstairs to Victorino. It's a two ball one strike count. Fernando Rodriguez pitched a Friday night in Washington. Came into the game tied 3-3 in the eighth inning. Worked a hitless inning. The Astros lost it in the 11th. Foul ball makes a count. Two balls two strikes. Five straight outings without allowing a run for Fernando. Switch hitter Victorino, switch hitter Rollins, then Polanco for the Phillies. Wesley Wright's warming in the Astros bullpen, probably with an eye towards a potential critical situation with uh, Ryan Howard should have developed. Mm -hmm. 3 2 now. Jay Happ through 112 pitches, 64 strikes in six innings, giving up four hits, one run with four walks and four strikeouts. In the air behind the plate, and the guys in front of us want this one. And they reach for it, and the guy in the Berkman jersey gets it. He dropped it, but he picked it up. He pulled it, but he stayed with it. Very happy fellow right down there in front of us. Cole Hamels threw 100 pitches, 63 were strikes in his five innings. And a strikeout for Fernando Rodriguez. Five for the Astros tonight. Slip the cheese right by the Hawaiians. Foot a little late getting down. Late all the way around. Sneaky. He's a little deceptive with that fastball. Comes over the top, hides it well. Fernando motioning to Carlos Lee with Jimmy Rollins up. Rollins might think about a bot. He's one for three. Fouls it for strike one. Rollins has hit uh, for a much higher average this year as a left handed batter, 278. That's the way the infielders play him. Each club has left seven on base. Astros about hit the Phillies 9 4. It's one and one. Oh my goodness, Toronto putting a hurting, or Boston putting a hurting on Toronto rather yeah. tonight. Want to make sure Wakefield finally gets that 200th win. <laughs> Big Poppy said it was time to panic. Well, they responded well to the panic. Yes, they did. Sometimes you push that panic button, it's a good thing. Went to the panic attack. Seven runs in the eighth. The draw has hit a couple of homers. Rollins strikes out. That's two strikeouts here for Rodriguez. The hard stuff to get Victorino and then soft to get Rollins. Series of off speed pitches, finally a slow curveball to finish him off. Wait on on that front foot. Rollins unable to make contact. Efron. 
Two punch outs in a row. Wakefield went six innings tonight, so he is in position to pick up that win. Polanco's 0 for 2 with a walk. It's away from ball one. Pedroia now has 20 homers with his pair of home runs tonight. Ellsbury hit his 27th. For Toronto, Bautista 42. And Sebia 23. One ball, one strike. Is Aaron Sebia a rookie? Uh, I think he's a second year. Second guy. Good looking young catcher, isn't he? Yeah, boy, look, catcher that has that much pop. Not a whole lot of those around. Two balls and a strike. Morrow started for Toronto. Wakefield gave up five earned runs in six innings for Boston. Bourgeois back into right center field. Cruises for out number three. Rodriguez gets the Phillies in order in the seventh inning to maintain the Astros five to one advantage. For the 2012 season during the weekend series against the Rockies, September 22nd through the 25th. The 50th anniversary logo will be unveiled on Thursday the 22nd in a special pregame ceremony with Astros legend. You want to be here for that, so get your tickets at Astros.com. Brownie? Thanks, Bart. That's going to be a big year to celebrate that 50th. The next year, this is season number 50, but all those celebrations will be taking place throughout the year next year. Carlos Lee takes that pitch high. He's one for three in this game. Count is 2-0. and oh. You say Aaron CB is listed as a rookie, huh? Yeah, he is. Okay. To this, uh, on a particular website I'm looking at. Okay. Broken bad looper. And the second baseman Martinez takes care of out number one for Herndon, who's retired four in a row since he came in. That movement he's got will produce a lot of those. A late movement running away from the barrel in on the hands of the right handed hitter out towards the end of the bat for a lefty. Both of those will produce. A fair number of shattered bats. Should do be. So that's all I wanted was to be able to make the ball move like that. It would be so much more fun. <laughs> Matt Downs has been on all three times. Hit by a pitch in the first, a single in the third inning, a walk in the fifth. Nice is one, backhanded. And the throw from Polanco is accurate for the second out. Herndon providing good relief for Charlie Manuel has set down five straight and now it's Chris Johnson. Johnson's 0 for 3. Let's see Aaron Sebia only had 35 at bats last year. So yeah, he'd be a 
rookie. And not hitting for much of an average, just 221, but 23 bombs, 75 driven in. Pretty solid rookie year. As we get closer to the end of the year and you start to contemplate those awards. Well, he would well, have to be a guy who would get some consideration. Trumbo for the Angels having a pretty big year. True. Strike to Johnson. Josh Reddick of the Red Sox. Solid numbers. Two balls and a strike. Two, three for Herndon after seven, five to one Astros. At uh, 7 p.m., we're teeping up with Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine to bring fans the most comprehensive four hours of high school football coverage in the state. Kicks off at 7 with Friday Football Live, followed by the Football Friday Blitz. Three hours of extensive coverage, including highlights and live reports from around the state. And they're not done because at 10.30, it's Friday Football Overtime, and the night ends with High School Scoreboard Live at Midnight. You have little excuse to not know the scores of your favorite teams by sticking with us. Guys. Michael Schwimmer's warming up in the Phillies bullpen. It's five to one. The Astros leading it. Pitcher spot could come up here in the eighth inning. Fernando Rodriguez had a one, two, three, seven. Hunter Pence homered in the fourth inning for the Phillies run. He also has drawn a walk tonight. A strike one to Pence. 24,302 the paid attendance tonight. Wesley Wright is warming up in the Astros bullpen along with David Carpenter. And on the curve it's strike two We're getting the announcement on uh, Jason Michaels injury and it is not good news. As a displaced fracture of the fourth metatarsal and uh, he's going to be out with surgery. That's the end of the season for Jay Michaels. One and two the count. Wow. Pence is down on strikes. That's number three for Rodriguez. Didn't look that bad. The fact that he was able to stay in the game initially gave you hope that it wasn't a serious problem. Yeah. Gonna really put a crimp with the postseason uh, golfing program. Ooh. I bet it is. Tough to grip that club. Ryan Howard is 0 for 2 with a walk. The Braves won over Florida 7 to 1 in Atlanta. Peter Moreland got that win in relief. 
getting Brad Hand. So that should be quite a relief for Freddy Gonzalez. Off the glove of Rodriguez. It goes out to Clint Barbas on the shift. Turns it into a 1 6 3 play for odd number two. I think sometimes that's just what a team needs is one win just to kind of yeah. turn things around a little bit. As they had lost four in a row. Cardinals won tonight. They beat Pittsburgh six to four. So that will remain a four and a half game lead for Atlanta over St. Louis in the wild card race. John Mayberry doubled in the second. He's one for three. So the Phillies' magic number is one for a playoff spot. Would have to win this game to clinch tonight then. That's strike one. Boston will gain a game on Tampa Bay, who got beat by Baltimore four to two. That's if they can make that 18 to 5 lead hold up in the ninth. <laughs> Carlos Lee watches that one go into the seats. No balls, two strikes. Phillies preparing to pinch hit if Mayberry gets on. Michael Schwimmer warming up in the bullpen. You see that three and a half game lead for Boston. And that will grow by a game. John Bowker's on deck. Schwimmer warming up there. That's strikeout number four for Fernando Rodriguez. He has two perfect innings here. Bridge the gap and take it to the bottom of the eighth. Five to one, Houston. Astros with you wherever you go this season. Just subscribe to MLB.tv tonight to see every Astros game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Go to Astros.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, it's baseball everywhere. Brownie, back to you. Thank you, Bart. Kevin Eschenfelder is getting ready for Astros Live post game show. Bart did pre game. Michael Schwimmer comes in. In five games as a Philly, he has no wins or losses. His ERA is 5.26 after being promoted from the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Oh, well, he's good for the Pigs. Nine and one with ten saves. Very good strikeout ratio. 11.38 strikeouts for every nine innings pitched down there at Triple A. Fastball slider changeup. JB Shuck bounces one. Ryan Howard is there tossing to Schwimmer. A low toss and safe at first. Not a good toss. And that cost the Phillies the out as Shuck was able to beat that play. A little single, but certainly an out should have been recorded there. Howard backing up to handle that hop and then a little indecisive before making the underhand toss, which slowed Schwimmer down a little bit, created a bang bang play at first. 
that the umpire got wrong but that's okay because it was awfully darn close and JB Shuck has a three hit game and that makes us look smart because we said he was going to be a hero when he came into the game <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's all good you had that one figured We're good with that shock three for three off the bench Quintero the batter and that's ball one to him he has fly to left and struck out twice Michael Stutz is warming up for the Phillies Ryan Howard would be the weak link defensively on that Philly infield with you know the regulars Utley Rollins Polanco not that he's a butcher over there but it's just adequate Brad Wallace on deck for the Astros to pinch hit pitcher spot coming up next Herndon had two perfect innings without any strikeouts for the Phillies same thing for Fernando Rodriguez for the Astros Chuck started for second and he slammed on the brakes which is ball two and it's two and oh to Quintero. Big dude here the swimmer listed at six eight. He's yeah. from the University of Virginia. Last year he was an all star in the Eastern League. Double A Reading where he had 11 saves. 14th round pick in 08. Throws over to first. Victor Martinez hit his 11th home run tonight for Detroit. It's 4 0 Tigers, bottom of the sixth inning in Chicago against the White Sox. Verlander with the shutout alive. What a tremendous year for Verlander. Yeah, when you contemplate those postseason awards, uh, Verlander winning the American League Cy Young seems like a slam dunk. There's other guys having really good years, but this seems to rise above the rest. Yeah, it does. Strike to Quintero. It makes it 3 1 to Q. Be nice to see him get 25 wins. Bobby Walsh, the last guy to do that. Sounds did right. Did Schilling get there? Some, somebody no. made a run at him, but I think Walsh is the last guy to do it. I think you're right. Rolander shooting for number 23 tonight. Nobody else has won 20 yet in the American League. Shuck takes off. It's foul back. And 3 and 2. Astros trying to make this nine wins in their last 13 home games. They had not won a game from the Phillies at Minute Maid Park since uh, September of 09 until last night. Are going again. There's a shot into center field, a line drive. Chuck will not be able to get to third. The ball sharply hit, and Victorino had it right in front of him. So first and second, nobody out, and we get a pinch hitter. Swimmer has a good slider, but that was not. A good slider. That was one that stayed up on him. Q able to stay back and then flip it on the line into center field. Now Brett Wallace has been called back now in a bunting situation. It's going to be on Hell Sanchez coming up to pinch hit for the pitcher Rodriguez. Two in two innings, allowed no hits, no runs, with no walks. He struck out four. Very good outing for Fernando. Astros up by four. They have 11 hits. Sanchez with 10 sacrifice bunts will be called on to do that. He leads the position players. Takes ball one. Bud Norris, who starts tomorrow, leads the club with 11 sacrifices. David Carpenter still warming up for the Astros. Bunted and Schwimmer will go to third. Get the first play there to Polanco on Shock. One out. Well, a big fell at 6'8, bouncing off the mound, showing a little athleticism. Not a great bump by any means, but still a nice play by Schwimmer. We get a fairly speedy JB Shuck there at third base. They always have to be aggressive in this situation. They're down four runs. Only have one at bat left. Two men on for Jason Bourgeois who's had a good night two for four an RBI a run scored a stolen base. Starting against the lefty Cole Hamels now batting against the right hander. He takes strike one. 
Schwimmer was an all star in the International League this year. His first half for Lehigh, Lehigh Valley something 5 and 0, oh, 6 saves, and 7 chances at 1.78 ERA. It's 1 and 1. Texas 8, Cleveland 3. They played 6 in Arlington. Josh Hamilton hit his 20th homer. David Murphy of Houston has hit a pair to give him 11. And he's really helped with the injury to Nelson Cruz, giving him the opportunity to come around, and he's done that in September. He just activated Nelson Cruz. Did they? Mm -hmm. yeah. With his power, he could be the guy at playoff time for the Rangers if he can prove he's healthy, and he still has a couple of weeks to do that. Should be an adequate number of games there for him to do that. Tim Wakefield did get win number seven of the year, number 200 for the Red Sox. They beat the Blue Jays 18 to six, beating Brandon Morrow. It's two and two. Colorado one, Milwaukee one, bottom of the six. Fielder hit his 32nd. Those bats have been a little quiet lately. Of course, four game series with the Phillies will, will do that. And most clubs, the Astros have had no problem here the first two nights. Clint Barmas on deck with Bourgeois batting and a 2 2 count. Fouls it back again. Arizona got two in the first at Los Angeles, backing Ian Kennedy. Miguel Montero hit home run number 16. Line to right field. Pence is there for the catch. Two outs. Well hit ball by Bourgeois. Hey, happy birthday, Ray. Ray He's up here in the booth with us. Yes. Oh, it's a big one, too. Wow. Ricky yeah, Weeks. Is. Fiona Apple, Michael Johnson, Mel Torme, the Velvet Fog, Rabbit, Warsler. Boy, could he go get him. Really? Yeah, whole time ball player. And uh, Wade Miller also with a birthday today. Whitey is uh, 35, I believe. Wonder if Whitey's still back in Pennsylvania. Haven't heard. Clint Barmas two for four, a big three-run homer in the fourth inning, taking ball one there. Clint can be a free agent in the offseason. Strike makes it one and one to Clint. Yeah, this is an important year for him. You know, losing the shortstop position to Tulowitzki, moving over to second base. I think he's always wanted to play shortstop, so I think he proved to a lot of people. And most around baseball already knew that he was a very good shortstop. But he was able to showcase those skills here this year. Hit by the pitch. It grazed him. Now Schwimmer has the bases loaded. Seventh time this year, Barmas has been hit with a pitch. JD Martinez gets a bases loaded at bat now in the eighth inning. In the first, he doubled to left and scored on, or he doubled to left and drove in Barmas. He's one for four. And tied ball one. St. Louis got two in the ninth and down Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh, six to four. Kyle McClellan got his 11th win, and Cole Hanrahan was a loser. Jason Mott picked up save number six. Pirates got a 23rd homer from Andrew McCutcheon. D. Lee hit his 17th. Hunter Pence camped in right center field, and in the eighth, the Astros stir up trouble but come away with no runs on two hits, leaving three, moving to the ninth with a 5 1 lead.
Saturday. That's online. FoxSportsHouston.com is the place to go every weekend to check out the best high school football in the state. This week, the coverage Saturday at 7 p.m. will have Westfield against Hastings. Join us all season long as FoxSportsHouston.com is your home for high school football in Texas. J.B. Shuck has moved from right field to left. Brian Bogusevic checks in as the Astros right fielder going to the ninth inning with a 5-1 lead. Pitcher number three of the night for the Astros is David Carpenter. He's 0-2 with three holds and a 2.95 ERA. The scoreless baseball in 12 of his last 13 appearances had an ERA of 0.87 in August. Solid. Initial run in the major leagues for 26 year old David Carpenter from Morgantown, West Virginia, and the University of West Virginia. Got a chance to finish this one off. Well, he had a thrill in San Francisco on August 28th when he got his first major league save in the 11 inning Astro win, 4 to 3. He's going to have to really go to. Uh, match what Fernando Rodriguez did tonight. my goodness six up six down with four punch outs. Outstanding job by Fernando here's John Bowker now pinch hitting for the pitcher. Fouling it for strike one. Bowker who's 28 years old from Sacramento went to Long Beach State University. He roomed with Troy Tulowitzki. Giants drafted him in the third round in 04 traded him to the Pirates last year. And he moved along to the Phillies this season. He was acquired uh, in a trade on August 30th. No balls, two strikes, so that makes him playoff eligible. Should the Phillies choose to go in that direction? Washington down the Mets, three to two. Stammen the winner. Storen got his 36th save. Foul ball. Johnson giving chase. See if CJ could get there. No, difficult. And he was twisting and turning, trying to follow the ball and then look for the fence at the same time. Wasn't in the air quite long enough for him to get there. Bruce Chan in Kansas City, blank Minnesota, 4 0 tonight. Alex Gordon hit his 22nd homer. Carpenter gets strike three on Bowker looking. Strike out number nine for Astros pitchers tonight. Come back to Seamer, clips the inside corner. Carlos Ruiz is 0 for 2 with a walk. Astros trying for back to back 5 1 wins over the team with the best record in baseball. Phillies have been swept in one series this year. Astros have a chance to do that here tomorrow afternoon, but they're going to have to go through Roy Halladay to do it. All the way. Their last hit was in the fifth inning. Jimmy Rollins with two outs, single to right. Troy Patton got the win for Baltimore, four to two over Tampa Bay tonight. Jim Johnson picking up save number five. Two balls and a strike. It in the air and Carlos Lee pursues it. So does Bogusevic, but it's about six rows back. Two balls, two strikes. That guy is very happy that it landed where it did. Plenty of room, nobody there to interfere with him. <laughs> well positioned. And he'll add that to the bag of balls he's acquired throughout the day. Brought his bag with him. Yankees got a Robinson Cano homer, his 26th of the year, in the top of the second at Seattle for a 1 0 lead. For AJ Burnett. 
This one to right field backs up Bogusevic. Bogey at the wall leaping and that one was hit a long way to the opposite field for a Ruiz home run. Ruiz number six of the year that gives him a 10 game hitting streak and it's five to two now. And Philly fans that are here there's quite a few of them here. A chance to cheer for Chooch. We don't really have to. Smother one to get out of here to right field. We talked so much about the Crawford boxes, but straightaway right field is not particularly deep either. Good effort here by Bogus Seven. Comes up just a little bit short. He almost got there. Now another pinch hitter, Pete Orr. He started last night, went one for four with an RBI. Looks at ball one. Batting for Martinez, who was 0 for 3. Mark Melanson is warming up for Houston. 253 for Orr. He's driven in four runs. Strike there makes it one and one for Pete, formerly with Atlanta and Washington. Get the run on that two seam fastball. The kind of hitters have not had a whole lot of luck against Carpenter this year, and that pitch right there, a good reason why. Popped up out of play. One two to Orr. Start time tomorrow, 105 for Bud Norris and Roy Halliday. We'll be on the air 12:30 with Astros Live tomorrow. Well, that'll be a good warm-up because all day games in Chicago over the weekend. Yeah. Up for my 20 telecast coming up on Friday and Saturday from Chicago. In the air, the shortstop Barmas moves over for the second out. Retiring Orr. And now the Phillies down to the final out with Victorino batting. Victorino struck out in the seventh inning in his first at bat of the night. Now Thursday, the Astros will be traveling. It's an off day. Wandy Rodriguez and Matt Garza hook up Friday in 120 in Chicago. On my 20, strike one. Saturday, it's a Henry Sosa Rodrigo Lopez pairing on my 20. At noon, and we will not be televising the Sunday game from Chicago. Brett Myers and Ryan Dempster will square off. One ball, one strike. Two. So the prospect of an Astro sweep as people perhaps that's why they're applauding, but they're probably just applauding very good baseball tonight. Solid approach for Jay Happ and the relievers and good hitting. In the air foul, and that one will go into the seats. Well, it's also because that's what fans have been trained to do now. Yeah. Two outs in the ninth inning, you stand up and start clapping. <laughs> We're conditioned, right? Yeah. Astro swept the Pirates here in late August. <laughs> Bring in a miss, and that'll do it as the Astros have taken the first two of the series from the Phillies. And Phillies waltzed in with a record of 94 and 49. The Astros beat them 5 1 last night. Take this one 5 2 tonight. There's the final pitch from Carpenter who strikes out two. Phillies get a Ruiz homer in the ninth inning, but as the Astros walk off the field, they are 51 and 97. They have knocked off the Phillies. Final score 5 2 Houston.